Hello and welcome to the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, K-beauty expert based in Seoul, South Korea, the founder of Style Story, where you can shop, learn and explore the world of Korean skincare and your guide to everything you need to know to stay up with what's happening in the Korean beauty industry and perfect your own routine at home. So for this week's episode, we are covering the latest and greatest and everything that is going on in the industry in Korea right now. And there are some very interesting new developments. In particular, I know some of our listeners will be keen to hear that there is a new sunscreen ingredient that is being greenlit for approval. So basically what is happening is that The Korean Ministry of Food and Drug Safety, the MFDS, has announced a draft amendment that will allow a new sunscreen ingredient to be used in sunscreen products. The ingredient is commonly referred to as MCE. It has a really, really long, complicated chemical name that I will include below in the show notes, Uh, but it starts out with methoxypropylamino and goes on and gets more complicated from there. So let's just call it MCE. The need to know about this sunscreen ingredient is that it is a chemical or organic type of ingredient, uh, and it is for absorbing UVA rays. It has a peak absorbance at 385 NM, Uh, which means that it is especially effective for ultra-long UVA rays. So I've had a look into some of the data because this is not an ingredient that I was familiar with. And according to JID Innovations in 2021, they came to the conclusion that the addition of this ingredient in sunscreen formulations leads to full coverage of UV spectrum and improved UVA photo, UVA-1 rather, photo protection. So the data supports benefits in the long term on sun-induced consequences, especially those related to public health care issues. That's just sort of science speak. But the ministry has announced its intention to uh, approve this. So I imagine it will only be a matter of time. So we can expect to see this in Korean sunscreen formulations going forward. Uh, I know we we do get requests from time to time to talk about, you know, what kind of filters and things like that are being used. So that is one of the new ones that you will start to see uh, probably sooner rather than later is this ingredient MCE. So I'll have the full details of that in the show notes. The other thing that was in the news recently was um, I was actually interviewed by Cosmetics Design Asia in relation to the sun patch trend that is currently booming here in Korea. Now, I know I've spoken about these before because I think I covered them in one of the K-Beauty Expo wrap-up episodes that I did. These have been trending for a while, but if you're not familiar with them, these sun patch products are essentially sticky little adhesive patches that you can pop on, for example, your cheekbones uh, to protect yourself from the sun. So they are um, obviously UV resistant and a a form of sun protection. Uh, I think a lot of people here tend to use them when they go golfing and do outdoor activities. Uh, There is an absolute craze for golf in this country at the moment like pretty much everyone I know is either learning to golf already knows how to golf wants to golf Um, it's a very kind of bougie sport here Uh, and I think that it has you know for a lot of people um, you know the connotations of being quite well to do because it is so expensive like forget the gear which obviously you know a lot of people like to go out and buy all of the latest golf fashions and um, you know clubs and all of that but just getting a round of golf at a Korean golf club is very, very expensive. Like I have been told, and I'm not a golfer, so don't quote me on this, but that it can cost at some golf clubs upwards of $500 a day for like a round, like a round of golf. I don't know if that's 18 holes, I guess. Uh, But suffice to say, it's very expensive. There are a lot of places in the city where you can do screen golf. 
uh, and sort of play inside. All of that is very, very popular. A lot of big buildings will have a screen golf center inside. So because of this and because, you know, people here really do like to take care of their skin, these sun patches have really taken off. Uh, they're just another way to shield yourself from the, the harmful effect effects of the UV rays. Lots of different brands, so many different brands have been uh, launching their own version of this. And essentially I was asked, well, what do you think? Is this like the new K-beauty trend? And I don't think this is going to go mainstream in a lot of countries. And there are a couple of reasons for that. So firstly, they don't cover the entire face at present. The people that I've seen using them are using them in um, distinct areas of the face. Uh, usually, as I mentioned, on the cheekbones, the majority of people I've seen walking around with these here have them just running along the places where you normally get the most melasma, particularly if you're female. Um, you know, we tend to get uh, melasma sort of down the cheekbone line. That's where I've seen the most people wearing them. I think they're more likely to be used for specific activities like golf. Uh, I know anecdotally, of course, but people that I've spoken to, they're like, look, they're not the most comfortable uh, because they feel a little bit heavy. Like you can tell that you're wearing a patch on your face. It's not the same as sunscreen. Uh, but, you know, obviously, if you are trying to protect yourself from the sun, having that extra layer gives people a little bit more confidence sometimes. I think this is probably the most likely to take off in other Asian countries where the use of these kind of additional sun protection tools is already common. I'm thinking things like UV parasols. I'm thinking things like driving gloves. A lot of um, Asians, uh, and even Asians in Australia, like to wear long driving gloves, whereas, you know, Caucasians traditionally didn't. Now, I think that that is changing for some people, particularly if you've seen, uh, you know, a difference maybe on one side of your arm that has way worse pigmentation than the other side. But I think that that's the kind of place and they are the kind of people who are most likely to want to try this kind of trend. I don't see this being something that you will go to the beach, uh, you know, in summer and see everyone wearing these UV patches. I don't think that's very realistic. The other thing is, the other barrier to this trend taking off will be local laws around sun protection claims. Uh, obviously, sunscreen is regulated as a drug in many jurisdictions, including places like Australia and America. So I think there could be some issues around then making these UV protection claims, saying that it blocks, you know, however many per percentages of UV rays. That could be a little bit of um, a challenge to this trend really taking off as well. Uh, but, you know, these products, very, very popular. That's just my hot take. Um, I haven't personally tried them only because uh, a couple of reasons. I don't do outdoor activities. I've mentioned before I'm a figure skater, so that's about as far away from the sun as you can possibly get. Um, I tend to spend my time indoors in a cold ice rink, so I don't really have this problem of being outside. The other thing is, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that when I go outside, I have a really, really ridiculously large hat that pretty much shields my entire face. So I'm not really getting the sun coming on to my face at this kind of angle that I would need, something like that. Uh, so I haven't personally tried them out. It's not the kind of thing that I would probably wear also because, you know, my skin being as sensitive and reactive as it is, I would be cautious about anything that needs to be stuck on there and, and peeled off. I don't know that that would be the best fit for me personally. Uh, but anyway, that was my take on this trend. I will put a link to the article. It's a whole long article that explains, you know, lots of different brands and everything like that. So go and check it out if you are keen to maybe read a little bit more about this trend. Uh, but that was my hot take on it. I don't think this is going to go mainstream in the same way as like sunscreens themselves have. Uh, they're also not the cheapest products. That's the other thing I didn't say. But, you know, they're already not that cheap here in Korea by the time you whack on on, you know, all of the export charges uh, and, you know, customs duties, rada, 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 VAT, whatever other countries do, that I can see these getting quite expensive. So I don't think that that will be the most appealing option then for a lot of people. That's just my take. Now, we have had a question of the week come in that I don't think I've actually seen before. So I thought it might be a good one to run through with you guys. 
And it, this was in relation to uh, the sugar crystals dissolving in a sugar scrub. So this was actually one of our Jellico customers, and she purchased our cinnamon toast sugar scrub foam at the beginning of the year. So it went out halfway through the year. And basically what she said was, um, the sugar crystals inside the scrub have dissolved, but can I keep using it? Uh, and the answer is yes, definitely. You can keep using the product after the sugar crystals dissolve. That's going to happen naturally over time once the product has been opened. Uh, the product itself can be used for uh, a year after opening, but because sugar is natural, once it starts being exposed to things like air, um, heat, different temperatures and all of that, naturally it's obviously going to dissolve just like it would if you you know, left it out um, on your kitchen bench or something. If you've ever made anything sugary, you'll know that sugar crystals do naturally dissolve. Uh, so that is just a natural phenomenon. In general, the best place to store it is not in the shower. Uh, I know from time to time we have customers come to us and say, with lots of different products, oh, you know, um, oh, for example, my powder wash has um, all started clumping together. And then you, you ask, oh, well, where, where are you storing it? And people are storing it in the shower. The shower is just not a great place to store your skincare products generally. Lots of different reasons. Mold, it gets really steamy in there. Uh, I would recommend storing them, and it actually will say this on most cosmetics, in a cool, dry place. Uh, and, you know, it's the kind of thing that people probably look at once on the packet and then throw it out and never look at it again or think about it again. But that is actually why you will prolong the shelf life of your products if you store them at the right temperature. If you live in a really, really hot climate as well, just keep that in mind, particularly in summer, uh, that you might actually want to move them somewhere cooler. If you've got, you know, like light coming in or lots of heat, heat coming in in summer, uh, do not be tempted to store your stuff in the car either. I, I see people say that from time to time, like, oh, look how many lip glosses I found in my car. Would not recommend that. Now, yes, everything is heat tested uh, and stability tested. We do all of that when we're making the products. But if they're already opened, then that's a bit of a different story. You know, they're not going to last as long. They're heat tested so that they can be transported to you. You know, whether that's by sea, they might be in the back of a post truck for a couple of weeks. They might be in the back of a plane in cargo or something like that on their way to you. But once you've opened them and started using them, you will have introduced different bacteria and things like that to them. So just be cautious and careful where you are storing them because it'll help you get more life out of the product, you know, more so than, you know, getting lots of different bacteria and things like that, which, you know, if they've got a proper preservative system, they should be okay. But you will get more bang for your buck if you store them as uh, the instructions suggest to store them. So I thought that one might be a good one just to cover because th these kind of questions pop up from time to time. But sugar crystals dissolving, yeah, they they will dissolve. Uh, particularly for ours, we used really, really fine sugar crystals. Now, if you've got a much chunkier product, a thicker product that uses like black sugar crystals, then they might not um, break down as, uh, as um, quickly. But because we were opting for something a lot more gentle, we used really, really fine white sugar crystals. That is why they will dissolve over time. Now, one other thing that I thought that some of our listeners might be interested in. So obviously we had to close off our books for the first half of 2023, the end of the, the financial year. And as we were doing that, obviously what we wanted to take a look at was all of our different figures for the business to see how everything is tracking. And one of the things that we took a look at also to help with our forward planning for the rest of the year was, well, what's selling? Like what's selling, what's not selling, uh, which products are people buying and how many are they buying? Like well, how much stock are we going to need on hand for the, the rest of the year? And uh, we obviously made a big list of products, things that we're going to get rid of, things that we are going to definitely need more of. And I thought, why don't I just share those with you? Because, you know, you might not know. <laughs> well, I mean, unless you were there with us, you probably wouldn't know. So these were our best-selling Korean beauty products for the first half of 2023. So January to 1st of January to 30 June. Uh, on our on our website stylestory.com.au so the first one the best seller was bubble tea steam cream uh, the jelly co one which is uh the best the best selling product on our site 
Um, and it has been, this is the second year in a row, actually, that it is the bestseller. So that was not altogether surprising. The second one was Subi's Perfect Pimple Patch, uh, which is just a plain hydrocolloid patch, ultra thin, barely visible, always gets rave reviews. That one has been a steady seller, a bestseller really for years. Uh, but that was, uh, the, the number two bestselling product. Now the number three bestselling product actually came at, uh, as a bit of a shock because we hadn't realized uh, that it was getting so much more popular these days. And that is our Jelly Co Cherry Blossom Sleeping Mask. So when we ran the figures, uh, we saw that the sales for this product were actually up by 167% uh, compared to the previous period, which was quite that's quite a big jump. Like often you will have jumps of, you know, maybe 10% or down by, you know, 17 or 20% or something like that. But 167% is a lot, a lot. Uh, so that one is quite surprising. Uh, so we are already thinking ahead for that product. We obviously don't want to change the formula itself. Uh, but we have already said that what we would like to do is uh, change the packaging on that product slightly for um, the next time we do it. So that has got us thinking about that and thinking about, you know, the jar that we want to use. We basically want to uh, transfer it into something that's a lot more lightweight, a lighter weight glass jar. So we're already sort of thinking about that, having seen how well it's selling. Uh, so there you go. That was the, the third bestseller. The next couple I don't think will come as a surprise to anyone. Laneige's Lip Sleeping Mask, very popular cult favorite product. Pretty much every time we have this in stock, it sells out. Uh, COSRX's Advanced Snail Mucin Essence, that one has been a steady seller for years and years. The next one after that was our Jelly Co Dewy Glaze Toner. Uh, and that's not surprising to us, I guess, just because of the feedback that we've had on that product, how versatile it is, that it works for all skin types types. You can use it in so many different ways. You can do the seven skins method with it. You can just apply it straight to your face. Um, our Australian customers in particular really love it, but we're starting to get really rave reviews from our US customers as well, which is really great. The next one after that was uh, Subi's Bare Skin Balm, which is a makeup and SPF removing cleansing balm. That's actually our best seller, um, more so than Hamish or Vanilla Co or any of those ones. So that one was in the top 10. Kahi's Multi Balm, not surprising at all. That little product sells out every single time we have that in stock as well. Uh, Dr. Jart's Color Correcting Treatment, which is um, that that green to beige makeup concealer that helps with red spots. Uh, again, another product that just always seems to sell out. Every time we get it, it sells out and people are like, oh God, when's it coming back? And then, you know, we'll, we'll get it back in stock a few weeks later. That one is very, very popular. I've spoken about that one plenty of times on the show. I feel like I don't really need to cover that one again. The tie for the 10th spot was actually between Misha's BB cream. So the um, M Perfect Cover BB cream, which we have sold on our website now for literally 10 years. So that product, uh, that was under the very first Korean beauty products we ever sold on our website. So 10 years in and it is still going strong. The other one is D'Alba's White Truffle First Spray Serum. Pretty much since we launched that product, it has been so popular. Uh, it is, of course, extremely popular in Korea. Dialba is one of these brands that is a lot more famous domestically here than it is in, um, overseas. But this product, if there is one of their products that is really, really beloved as well, I think it would be this one overseas. So that was our best selling products for the first half of 2023. Uh, you can guarantee that we're going to get plenty more of them in, but I will be interested to see how this sort of shifts and changes. If anything new sort of enters the top 10, what falls off the rankings? Uh, because we've th th that cherry blossom sleeping mask in particular, I don't even think that was in the top 10 last time we did it. So there you go. It is definitely possible for products to get way more popular all of a sudden. Uh, and that is just one example. Now, the other thing is we have had lots of new product reviews left on our website. Uh, so I thought I would run through some of them with you. Now, the first one was for Purito's Seeker Clearing BB Cream. 
And our reviewer gave this one a five-star review, and she said, so impressed. Lightweight and evens out skin tone, sheer coverage, sets to a satin finish, not flat matte or oily shiny. Looks and feels very natural, good shade range in terms of catering for deeper skin tones, but more undertones in the light to medium category would make it even better. Given the affordable price point and the ethical values of the brand, this was a great purchase. So thank you very much. That's a really good feedback. Uh, And yeah, look, shade ranges for Korean BB creams, always an issue. Uh, I agree with that. Who who knows whether the company will hear us or not, but I think it it comes down to what sells for them too. Uh, But yeah, agreed. Shade ranges, uh, dicey. (laughs) Now, Applebee's Intensive Healing Foot Cream. That was another one we got a five-star review for. Now, this one, interestingly enough, is actually one of our best-selling products at Woolworths in Australia. So, Star Story is the official supplier of Korean beauty products to Woolworths supermarkets, the largest supermarket chain in Australia. Uh, And we have a collection online available with them. And this product literally is so, so popular. So this was actually just a style story customer, but she said, my feet are moisturized. I don't love the smell, but I'm very willing to put up with it for the results. That is a very honest feedback. Thank you for that. Uh, And yeah, anything that has a lot of acids in it, like um, this one does to get those great results they do tend to smell a little bit funky I agree (laughs) thankfully it's on your feet so it's not like it's right under your nose but yeah a lot of people will say that with products that have AHAs and BHAs in them that they just don't smell great Um, unavoidable I think (laughs) now we also had uh, the first review for our new gelato glaze lip mask so that's a bit exciting it was a five-star review Uh, And our reviewer said, lip glaze perfection. Jellico have knocked it out of the park. Again, this lip mask makes your lips feel luscious. Uh, It isn't overpowering with fragrance or taste and a little goes a long way. It also doesn't leave your lips feeling sticky as the lip mask absorbs into your lips, leaving them perfectly moisturized. So thank you very much to our reviewer, Karina, for the very first ever uh, lip mask review. That is very exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm very keen to see what everyone thinks of it. Uh, and the final one I had for this week was for Subi's Perfect Pimple Patch. Uh, And our reviewer said, pimple saviors. Love these patches, have used for at least a year now, and these are by far the best for daytime use. So thank you very much to everybody who shared their reviews. Uh, Very helpful. I always love seeing your um, recommendations for what you think it does, what you think it doesn't do, if there are any need to knows like smell or anything like that. Very, very helpful. So thank you. Now, for this week, I'm going to finish up with my best and worst of the week. And my worst of the week was actually from a couple of weeks ago, but I'm still dealing with the after effects. I'm going to share it. And that is that I had quite a bad allergic reaction to a sunscreen product. Uh, It is one of the top trending sunscreen products at the moment. It is the Beauty of Joseon one, uh, their rice sunscreen, the probiotic one. So I had a really, really bad reaction to that, which pretty much left me with red spots and bumps all over my face from forehead to all the way down my neck. Uh, and that has left me basically babying my skin for the last few weeks. Now, it was my own fault. I patch tested this one and tested it a few times, and my eyes had a really bad reaction to it. Uh, It actually made my eyes so sensitive that it not only hurt putting it on, but it also hurt washing it off later at night. Like I noticed when I was doing my double cleanse, my eyes were stinging again washing it off. So, I think the takeaway for me is that for me personally, chemical sunscreens are often really not the best fit for my skin. My skin is extremely sensitive and reactive, so I do need to be a little bit careful. So what I've done is I've gone back to using mineral uh, sunscreens, so the chemical-free ones. Uh, that are, you know, with zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, they are a much better fit for my skin. Yes, they do leave a white cast for me, but they do not sting. And more importantly, they do not set off my reaction. 
reactions. Uh, I know that this is a common thing. A lot of people that have extremely sensitive skin say the same thing. So that just wasn't a fit for me. I know that a lot of other people really love it. So happy for you guys. In general, chemical sunscreens and I need to be very careful. Uh, so I have offloaded that one to my husband who has the skin of an ox and will be totally fine with it. He gets all of my, my off cuts. Uh, yeah, but that one for me was not a very good fit. So yeah, unfortunately, I've still got red spots, sort of really big red spots that I'm dealing with on my neck. I shared a photo of that on my Instagram. Not fun, but hey, it happens. Now, the best thing that has happened to me was that uh, we launched our Gelato Glaze Lip Mask in Australia. That was really exciting. We had launched it uh, globally, internationally uh, in June, but we recently just launched it in Australia. And seeing the, the, the feedback and the reaction to that has been lots of fun. Um, yeah, it's always fun, but very... It's fun launching a new product, but it's also, um, it can be very stressful because all the hard work is done. It's out there. There's nothing more that you can do except, you know, wait and hear the feedback. Uh, so everyone's obviously trying it out at the moment. Lots of people that I know, uh, lots of our customers and whatnot. So just waiting anxiously for the feedback to see whether people like it. Uh, that has been the best part of the week. Um, it is always fun. It's definitely fun putting a new product out there. But um, yeah, it does not come without anxiety just because it's already done. It's too late. If people are like, we hate this product, then <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it. Um, and even though we obviously, you know, share it extensively among people we know, it's not the same as putting it out there for paying customers that, you know, have their own expectations and, you know, things that they want from it. So yes, that has been my best of the week, but not without, you know, a few stresses. Uh, and that probably hasn't helped my skin either. I notice that my skin always is a lot more just sensitive and touchy um, when I'm really, really stressed. And I have had a lot going on lately, so that probably hasn't helped either. But anyway, I'm babying my skin at the moment. I am just loading it up with lots of hydration. I'm keeping everything else to a bare minimum and just trying to sort of let it heal. So fingers crossed my skin will be back to normal shortly, but this this happens, guys. It happens to the best of us. There's nothing that you can really do to avoid a reaction if you're going to have one. I mean, patch testing definitely helps, but the, the problem I have is that often my skin won't throw up a really bad reaction until a few days later, and then it's just all over Red Rover. Um, so look, that happened to be, um, yeah, not great timing it being summer and all and needing to definitely up my sunscreen use, but what can you do? All right. I am going to finish it up here for this week. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you do have either a question that you would like answered, if you have a suggestion for a segment, any of those kind of things, I would absolutely love to hear from you. You can always send our team an email. We are admin at stylestory.com.au and one of us will get back to you. Or you can come and find me. I hang out on Instagram. I am at lauren.kbeauty. Uh, feel free to slide into uh, my DMs. Um, I will try and get back to you, especially if it's one of our listeners. I, I always do try and make a point. Sometimes I have people sliding into my DMs asking like a million different things. For, can, can they have my firstborn child? Can I help them set up their business? Uh, and they're not following me and they don't listen to the show. And I'm just like, whoa, hold on a second. Uh, but if you are a listener of the show and you slide in, I will try and make um, make the time to respond to you, even if I don't get back to you straight away. So always love hearing from you guys. And I'm going to finish it up here until next week. I will see you on Style Story. 